Hey everybody, this is Dr. Duncan at Siskiyou Vital Medicine, and this is Wednesday Night Live. Um, to my right is Ron Mattel, our nutritionist and lifestyle uh, coach of sorts. He's a, just a magnificent individual. He knows a lot about everything. And then uh, we have Dr. Sonia Halsey to my left, and she's an, also an amazing individual and one of our physicians here at uh, Siskiyou Vital Medicine. For those of you who do not know anything about Siskiyou Vital Medicine or, or, or new to us, um, we are a direct primary care clinic in Medford, Oregon, where we provide uh, unrestricted access to primary care services. And we happen to be naturopathic physicians, so we think about things a little bit differently. Uh, we try to use natural therapies when we can and, un and uh, address the underlying cause of illness. So we try to get to the root cause of things that are affecting you. So tonight's uh, session is about um, answering those pressing health questions that you might have, that, uh, that you may have, or your friends might have. But essentially, this is supposed to be something that's fun for all of us um, and then serve as a resource for uh, our clients and our community. So if you have any questions, any pressing health questions, please get on uh, your computer or your, your tablet or phone and then um, text us or email us or send us questions that you might have. Um, so I'm going to let – Ron's going to be our moderator, and so we're going to uh, – Turn it over to Ron and have you say a few things. Thank you, Dr. Duncan. So we were thinking about, since this is the inaugural Wednesday Night Live, it's the first time that we're doing this, um, we thought we would come up with a few uh, questions for ourselves uh, that, that we could uh, offer to you um, just to kind of get the ball rolling a little bit. So as we thought about that, we noticed that it is heading into declining sunlight right now. And, um, and with sunlight, we think of vitamin D. And here in Oregon, vitamin D is a big topic for us. And one of the, the questions that I hear a lot is, do you get adequate sunlight for vitamin D production at this latitude as you move into the fall and the winter? And that's a, a, a great question. And uh, the reality is, no. From November through March, we don't get adequate sunlight. We don't get the UVB rays at this latitude that are necessary for vitamin D production. What, what is latitude? <laughs> so how far are we from the equator, essentially, right? So the, the Earth being curved, and um, so we're not getting that direct sun like, the, like you would at the equator. So, um, you know, I see it in, in clinical practice a lot that people come in and, and they're actually vitamin D deficient, and uh, at least they're not, their levels are not optimal. So, you know, we do a lot of testing here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I think, have you seen that in your practice? Yeah. What do you guys like to consider optimal levels of vitamin D when you run a test? I look for 60 to 80. It's nanograms per deciliter. Mm -hmm. And uh, really anything above that can actually be toxic to the body. And below that is somewhat of a deficiency. Um, I'm, what's the actual line the of cutoff. deficiency? So we're, looking, so we're looking at anything below 30. You know, and, and labs do vary, but... Anything below 30 is considered uh, low. Um, and then, you know, I've seen people as low as 17 and 20, so that kind of freaks me out a little bit. Actually, I had an experience like that living in Seattle. I had my vitamin D levels tested, and I think I was 17. I think that's the lowest person I've ever seen. So. I think the lowest I've seen is a 12. Yeah. yeah. Portland. So, so it's important that, that um, you know, for those, for those individuals considering vitamin D supplementation to speak with your provider, your physician, and um, get tested. Because vitamin D is, is essential. Um, so where do we get vitamin D in food? Usually the foods that are rich in vitamin D are your organ meats, which we don't really eat anymore. So uh, liver would be a great source of vitamin D. Uh, as well as fish, fatty fish. So the fish like salmon, tuna, mackerel, those are all great sources of vitamin D as well. Uh, Grass-fed butter, uh, so fat such as that. And then uh, mushrooms, mm. mushrooms like cremini mushrooms, mm -hmm. um, as well as portobellos, white button mushrooms, those are good sources of vitamin D. And then last but not least, uh, another fantastic source would be eggs. Yolk of eggs are great sources of vitamin D. Just name some of my favorite foods. Me too. I love fats. <laughs> so what would you look for in a patient that you think might have some vitamin D? What are the symptoms? Well, so, so anybody that's suffering with uh, frequent infections, um, someone who might have a uh, autoimmune condition, cancer, but really anything that leads, or, or low calcium, so chronic low calcium, muscle cramping, fasciculations, that's what I, I started thinking about vitamin D. But 
for me, just living in the Northwest, I think of vitamin D as a foundation. So I'm, I'm testing most people if they're not already on it. And then, and then people who have taken it for a long time. I'm interested to see whether or not that individual is absorbing vitamin D because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. And so some people do have issues with absorption of vitamin D. But, but anybody that's suffering from a chronic illness, I kind of tend to look at vitamin D levels because sometimes it can make a huge difference for an individual. Um, even in hormone production. So those people with low um, testosterone or, or hormone dysfunction, I, you know, I, I consider vitamin D. How about you? Same. Same? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so do we have any questions coming up for us? What are some of the symptoms when they have? Okay, I guess we, we sort of answered that. What, what, what was that? What, what are some of the, of the symptoms one may have if ah. they are deficient? And then, you know, you get into frank deficiencies or, or uh, pathological deficiencies. So you get softening of the bones, uh, you get poor calcium absorption, you know. So we think of uh, osteomalacia, osteoporosis, that sort of thing. So, you know, anybody that's actually suffering from osteoporosis, I look at vitamin D as a part of the, the treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, all of which are fat-soluble soluble vitamins. But that's all, uh, those are essential for building that that bone matrix. And, um, you know, you mentioned the foods that are high in vitamin D. <clears throat> and vitamin D is important not only for the immune system and, and the endocrine system, but it's also important for absorbing calcium, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know, uh, vitamin D gets a lot of publicity uh, in, in the, the world of natural health. And uh, uh, the question I have is, if it's so good, should everybody supplement? Palsy? Well, I think the testing, again, is really important. I think knowing is better than just mm -hmm. making a guess if someone needs to be supplementing. It's you could probably could assume a little bit that if they live in Oregon or the Pacific Northwest, that yes, they probably are low in their D. But testing, I think, is always the best way to start before you do any type of um, treatment protocol, really. I agree. I, I'm not, a, you know, there's a lot of self supplementing out there. You know, people read things, they think, oh, that sounds like me, I should get it. And, um, and then they go and they start supplementing. And many times I see people over supplementing. Exactly. With and with vitamin D, it's mm -hmm. pretty important to not be over supplementing. Right. And some people will just find like a 10,000 IU product and think that's what they need and they keep taking it for months and months. And mm -hmm. then their vitamin D is too high. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, we carry a product, we just got it in that I really like. Um, I don't know if you can even see it. Zoom. There it is. Uh, but it's a D emulsion, so it's a liposomal vitamin D, and it's only a, it's a thousand IU's per drop, so you can really go up and down. Um, as as you said, as what, can you tell me what liposomal is? So it's just connected to usually like a choline, phosphate choline, mm -hmm. which helps the absorption um, through. I mean, basically, it just helps with fat absorption. Most of the liposomals are this. And so, you know, one thing I wanted to mention to, to those of you who may not know is, is that there are different types of vitamin D, right? So you have vitamin D2 and you have vitamin D3. Right, right. And so I think the vitamin D emulsion is a vitamin D3 product. And usually the products um, we mm -hmm. use are, are already vitamin D3, and that just means that um, they've been converted from vitamin D. D2 to D3, so that, that alleviates that step from, from your body having having to do so. So you know, I think that's important. So some some people will come come in with vitamin D2 products, and you can you can still find vitamin D2 products. Um, I like the demulsion um, liposomal just because you know it does uh, improve the the absorption, and that sort of speaks to the quality of the supplements that that we carry and that we prescribe to people and. And, um, you know, so if you're going to be supplementing or if you know that you you need vitamin D, make sure that you get it from a reputable source. Absolutely. And any of the products that, that we carry at Cisco Vitamins are absolutely reputable and, and researched. And uh, so big fans of high quality products because not all products are made the same. And that's something that's really important to understand that not all products are made the same. And, and the demulsions in the liposomal delivery uh, actually allows it to get into the bloodstream rapidly as well, cross through the lymphatic capillaries quite quickly, and uh, and then that that liposomal action allows it to just cross cell membranes uh, with 
great ease. So you get an increased absorption, not just absorption. I think that's a really important thing to talk about as, as that comes up that absorption isn't the end all be all of a product. It's a buzzword around products absorption is, uh, but there's a few other steps that have to happen after one absorbs something that is you have to be able to retain it and assimilate it and finally utilize it on a cellular level. So when you're looking at, and that's something we call bioavailability, that's what bioavailability is. So when you're looking at a good emulsion product that's liposomal, and it's emulsified, uh, you are getting a high bioavailability, as, which leads to great utilization on the cellular level. So that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, one thing, one interesting fact I learned about vitamin D, this was last year, um, Going into the fall, you mentioned you know the, the light's getting lower, right? We're we're going into shorter days, so less sunlight, which means less vitamin D production from, uh, or less UVB exposure and less vitamin D production by the skin. Um, and that is uh, a naturopath by the name of Patrick Donovan in, in Seattle, Washington. He he had mentioned that uh, vitamin D has been uh, found to be as effective as the flu vaccine, which is very fascinating, right? So you see that vitamin D is super important for the immune system. And going into flu season, you know, I think that it's really important to get tested, uh, make sure that your vitamin D levels are up to, up to speed, and, and then find a good product that you can supplement with if you are in fact deficient. And I would, I would venture to say that most of us living in the Northwest could use some sort of um, um, supplementation with vitamin D. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially, yeah, especially since a lot of us out there are avoiding these amazing fats that contain a lot of vitamin D. I, you know, I don't recommend avoiding fats uh, like like most people, you know, think about, oh, I got to avoid the cholesterol and the fats and stuff. But, you know, if you're eating, if you're eating well, and I, and I like a, a sort of a, a Weston A. Prize Paleolithic type diet that's high in healthy fats, lots yeah. of vegetables um, and moderate proteins, you know, that can help. But I do think that most of us can, can use that. Absolutely. That I can't emphasize the, the importance of high quality fats and all, especially high quality animal fats and, as well as plant fats. So saturated fats are really important also. Um, so so another thing with, with vitamin D would be um, you know, some people uh, think that uh, um, that when they wear sunscreen in the summer they can still convert vitamin D. Um, with the sunscreen on, and I, I don't believe that's the case. What do you guys think about that? Well, you know, that's a tough question. I, I haven't seen the research based on that, and I think it varies with SPFs, mm -hmm. all right? And and what I like to do, what I like to do personally is, um, I like to get a little bit of sun before I put sunblock on, so I'm out in the sun for 10 to 15 minutes to get that vitamin D infusion mm -hmm. from the sun, mm -hmm. and then I go ahead and put some block on and protect my skin. But I think that getting a little bit of sunlight is important for the body. What do you think? Just a little bit. Yeah. Just little touches. <laughs> Just a little bit of sunlight. A little good. sprinkling of sunshine. Yeah, and you know, I don't want to get off topic too, but it's really important to know what kind of sunscreen you're putting on your yeah, body. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So, you know, um, I do think that, yes, 10 to 15 minutes when, when it is, when we are in the summer season, of sunlight is really beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. Vitamin D is made in our skin. We have that for a reason. So, um, yeah, and then I, I've i actually heard that it doesn't. If it blocks any UVB, then the sunscreen will not. Right. Um, it'll block all you, um, vitamin production. Right, right. So the more UVB rays you're blocking, the less vitamin D you're able to get from the sunlight, mm -hmm. to convert from the sunlight. So, you know, from my understanding, our ancestors would could produce up to 10,000 IUs a day from full body sun exposure. So that's pretty significant. That's a amount. great dose. Mm -hmm. And considering the RDA is what, 400 to 800 IU? Yeah, I think they raised it to so, 800, did they? Yeah. Bold move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Especially when all the research shows 5,000 or more people can really shift. And our ancestors probably did have more melanin in the skin, which, yep. you know, is helpful for blocking other damaging melanin that could reach. Mm -hmm. Which melanin in the skin is the hormone that that turns the skin uh, brown, right? So uh, the darker the skin color, the more the, the greater the need for vitamin D action, because uh, you're not converting as much from the sunlight. So that's another thing to take into consideration as well. 
So many things to talk about with vitamin D. I would have never thought <laughs> we could just keep going okay, on Okay, here's another D. one. Like toxic, toxic. When is when is it at a toxic level, mm. and what do you see? So I believe that um, toxicity levels would include um, feeling dizziness. Um, you would have hypercalcemia, so meaning you have too much calcium in your blood, um, which can lead to nausea. Um, I think heart palpitations, sweating, sweating, muscle fasciculations or muscle seizing. Um, so again, I think it's really important to make sure that you're not, you know, overdosing on, on vitamin D and get those levels checked. Yeah, so for sure. I uh, had a mentor in school, and their general rule of thumb is that if you're not going to get your vitamin D tested, like if you're watching this and you don't want to get the test, just please don't take more than 2,000 IUs a day. Yeah, that's pretty safe. And um, so um, testing, how is testing done for vitamin D? It's a blood test. Just go to the lab, get some blood out of your Easy peasy, right? Yeah. So it's relatively inexpensive test, I believe. So right. Sure how much so here we... Um, at Siskiyou, we, um, we can test vitamin D levels. Um, one test is looking at 25-hydroxy, which is sort of the standard test to look at. Um, it runs about $48, so it's pretty affordable. You know, in comparison to other tests, I know other labs can you know, do it for a little bit more. I think I, uh, uh, the lab we were using before is charging around $80 or $90. So you know, look into that and ask your physician or your provider um, how much vitamin D testing might, might cost. But it's a blood test. We check for 25 hydroxy, and there are different forms of vitamin D. So, as, again, there's vitamin D2, vitamin D3, and then vitamin D3 is broken down to 125 hydroxy and 25 hydroxy. So, and that just means the 125 is, is coming from the kidney. So, your, your skin will produce 25 hydroxy, and then it goes to the kidney and gets um, um, converted to 125. And so, and that brings me to another point. So, if anybody has kidney disease or, or problems with kidney function, then it's really important. Have you ever seen vitamin D benefit somebody with like chronic pain issues or inflammatory issues? Yes. <laughs> so going yes. back to what you said <laughs> about like the people you would be suspicious of low vitamin D, a lot of autoimmune conditions, um, low in vitamin D, multiple sclerosis, this is all inflammatory, you know, the inflammation in different parts of the body with MS is around the nervous system and the myelin sheath and bone. So, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So a couple things I check for with autoimmune conditions. One, I check for vitamin D, and the other is I check for iron overload. So mm -hmm. sometimes, and that can get us into a whole other topic, topic of looking at, you know, too much <laughs> iron in the body can cause inflammation and sort of um, uh, mimic uh, symptoms of like rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis and those types of things. So it can be inflammatory to the joints and the liver and so. Yeah, I was, I was looking at some information a while ago on uh, uh, something called NF-kappa-B, which is an inflammatory mm -hmm. expression, and, and it was showing that one of the things that can actually stop, because the thing with NF-kappa-B is once it's expressed, it's kind of uh, self-perpetuating. It, it just keeps repeating itself uh, and causing it to stimulate more uh, inflammation and pain. And so vitamin D is something that can go in and actually block that, feedback loop from, from going on. So it could be a, a really good possible um, adjunct to any protocol for pain inflammation. Mm -hmm. sort of you know, um, one other um, piece of uh, the picture I think is, or piece of the puzzle is, if you're supplementing vitamin D, um, I would consider also eating lots of dark leafy greens to get vitamin K, mm -hmm. especially vitamin K2, because you know, vitamin D is going to be absorbed in the system, and it helps calcium absorption. And um, like we mentioned, with uh, too much vitamin D, you can have hypercalcemia or too much um, calcium in the blood. And vitamin K2 will sort of help direct that calcium uh, to where it needs to go, like in the bones, um, and most importantly. So, you know, when uh, we have a, a product that's made by Natura here in Ashland, Oregon, and it's vitamin D A K. So that's that's one of the products I like to use for for people who have problems with um, bone formation or osteoporosis, mm -hmm. osteopenia. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, so it not only is it an anti, sort of an anti-inflammatory, it's an immune modulator, it's a bone builder, um, but it's important to know that, you know, what can what 
can support vitamin D in its, its role. You know, and vitamin K2 is important. Yeah. And you'll find, find that sometimes in MK7. Right. Right. Yep. MK7. Yep. MK7 is a, is a popular version that's out in the, in the supplement world. And you can find that. And you can find MK7 in combination with vitamin D3 as well. And so they, they go well together. Nice pair. I think it's a smart blend. Yes. Yeah. I, agree. I like it when it makes it easy, right? So yes. liposomal <laughs> is awesome. And then you can find products that are blended together, sort of complement each other. And, and, and that's just to avoid taking uh, a capsule of vitamin D, a capsule of vitamin A, and a capsule yep. of vitamin K. It's all in one. So we mm -hmm. like easy, right? That's right. Yeah, convenience. And as far as vitamin D is concerned, another thing as far as supplements go is that if you're not going to use something like a demulsion that's uh, emulsified and liposomal, if you do buy a vitamin D3, make sure that there's some sort of, um, whether it be MCT oil or coconut oil, or flaxseed oil, olive oil, some sort of fat in the capsule along with the vitamin D so that there's something to help absorb uh, that vitamin D through the, through the uh, lymphatic capillary. Or take it with a spoonful of grass-fed butter, and you're all good. And favorite delivery method. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, who puts butter in their coffee? I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. So, um, you know, that brings you back to a talk we had recently with um, David Salch from Little Sprouts Farm. Mm -hmm. And we talked about food quality. And one of the things that struck me the most is that uh, – how, how adulterated our food system has become and how, you know, we're looking at, um, and I know I'm getting off in the weeds a little bit with this, but we're looking at food quality in terms of, you know, what was it exposed to, uh, when was it picked, you know, um, where was it grown, where was it raised, how was it raised, you know, that all impacts um, how, much, how much nutrient is in that product, right? So you talk about the foods that are high in vitamin D. Well, I think it's really important to know uh, well, is it grass-fed butter? Is it 100% grass-fed? Or right. is it just grass-finished? Or is it grass-started? So, you know, the quality of our food system is going to have a huge impact on, on the vitamins that you are getting um, from your food. And so if you're thinking that, you know, um, I don't live in Oregon, but I'm in, uh, I'm in, you know, some other place that gets a little bit more sun, I think I get plenty from my food. Well, just look into your food system and start asking those questions um, about, you know, where your food comes from. Because I think that um, just as Hippocrates said, you know, uh, food is medicine, right? So uh, I, think, I think it's really important that uh, we, we understand where our food's coming from and the quality of our food. I think that's one of the biggest issues in nutrition today mm -hmm. is food quality. Right. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What, what I see as a nutritionist is a dramatic decline in the quality of food. And, and, and you can actually trace the, the decline in the quality of food with the decline in the nutrient level of the food as well. So. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly that the, the, the more local, uh, the, uh, whether it be organic, biodynamic, sustainably, regeneratively um, grown, that's all going to add higher levels of nutrients into the, into the food. The soil is well cared for, and uh, there's a healthy microbial system there as well, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that can lead to higher nutrient levels in, in, in you. Yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, they want to go a natural method, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to use like naturopathic medicine to improve their health. They're they're sort of kind of over the the pills and the surgery. And um, I think supplements and, and herbs work work great, and lifestyle changes they work they work great. But to really form that foundation, I think that the food quality needs to be there because that's kind of what's bringing you know enlivening you. We're taking those enlivening forces from from the food and, and you don't have that in place, you, you know, you're starting to put a roof on a bad foundation. That's right. right. Kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. You're just putting band-aids over bullet holes by taking supplements. The bullet holes. <laughs> That's how I always call it. Band-aids over bullet holes when you yeah. take supplements. If you're not dealing with, with your food, if you're not eating high quality, nutritious food. So and, and, you know, it's like 98% of the people, you know, everywhere are nutri nutrient deficient in some way. Mm -hmm. And are, we're needing to work on those nutrient deficiencies. So, you know, supplementation can be important for a little while. And they're not bad bullet holes. I mean, it's not the worst way to fill a bullet hole. <laughs> but yeah, it's continuing to try and get higher quality food in the diet. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
that stimulated a thought that I hadn't lost. Well, I, it stimulated a thought in me. Go for it. Yeah, the, go. The question, um, the question is, uh, when you look at someone who might be deficient in, in a nutrient, you know, are there certain um, cravings that come up for people? Like, do you see a correlation between, you know, I have a, I have a deficiency in this and it leads to a craving of, of that? Of that. Of, of this specific thing. Yeah, possibly. Maybe like I'm well, deficient so, in, in like amino acids or I'm deficient in uh, my omegas or some sort of fatty right. acid. And, it and I mean, that's a FICA is, right, where people are deficient in specific minerals and they, they, they crave eating what? clay. They eat clay? They eat clay. Mm -hmm. clay. Absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so specific deficiencies can lead to craving really bizarre things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so different amino acid deficiencies can lead to craving certain foods that might be rich in those amino acids. Isn't that called pika? Pika, pika thank so you. Pika. Pika. pika, pika. Pika, pika. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't I'll take a pika, pika. Do you know what that stands for? <laughs> Pop quiz. What does that for? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll put that up. Okay. Uh, also, <laughs> you know, if you, uh, so put the dirt down, right? Get some, <laughs> get some nutrients. I don't know. Minerals. Maybe put the dirt in. Right, right, right. Well, this is, get this those is... soil microbes. Exactly, exactly. Eat dirty vegetables as long as they're organic, organic. Yeah. Not How about grow them. your own vegetables, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Grow your own vegetables, go out in your garden, snack. Right. Don't like hyper -sanit and don't hyper sanitize your, right. your vegetables. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing, thinking about, you know, food and all is nutrient is, um, sorry, uh, food diversity because uh, there was a time where our ancestors were consuming upwards of 300 different plants for food and medicine. And when you're consuming that wide of a variety of, of material, that's a, it's really, it, it makes it much easier to meet your nutritional demands. And what we're at, where we're at today is that two thirds of our food supply comes from just three foods, and that's wheat, rice, and maize, or corn, all of which are calorie high, but nutrient poor. Uh, and then about 90% of our food supply only comes from 15 different foods. So we're looking at a time where we're at dramatic uh, reduction of agrobiodiversity, and, and, and that makes it even harder to meet our nutritional needs in combination with the fact that the food is highly refined and processed and uh, the soil is, is depleted. So um, the more diverse foods you can consume, uh, eat a rainbow of colors, so to speak, Make sure it's uh, as fresh, organic, grow it yourself, or shake the hand that feeds you, find local farmers where you can get your food from. All that will give you higher nutrient values. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, I kind of wanted to, I think you're going to write a blog about that. Are you, are you going to be talking about um, our food system and sort of like, like we're going to have a conversation about the fact that our food system is basically coming down to to carbohydrates, <laughs> right? Yes, like we're eating like yes. different forms of wheat, different forms of corn, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty unfortunate. Yes, actually. I would love to write a blog on. Yeah. Maybe write maybe, a blog. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I was. I don't maybe I'm volunteering. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what I'm doing? I'm gonna be writing a blog on on, yeah. on food diversity. Yeah. So you do you have a um, a blog coming out soon, right? You're talking about tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. What's Do you want to give a little sneak preview of what you're talking sure. about? Sure. Um, so I don't know if anyone's been checking the blog. Um, Dr. Duncan put one out about respiratory health with all this smoke and more like immediate things you should be doing. And I thought I'd follow up with more of the healing and repair of the lungs. Mm -hmm. So I talk about how um, wet herbs can really help heal the lungs, nutrition, and supplementation. So we also made a nice... Um, tincture that we have at the front desk with all the herbs that are actually in the blog. So if you're feeling the effects from all the smoke, come on in and get yourself a little tincture. It'll help you out. Awesome. Okay. awesome. And then um, we have a class that's kind of um, in halfway, we're halfway through a, a series right now. Actually, um, we're coming into the last two classes. Wow. And then yeah. we'll be starting up a new course, right? Coming up soon? We're starting a new course, uh, October 12th. So Thursday is called Transforming Your Relationship with Food, and this is going to be a deep dive in examining um, what your relationship with food is like, uh, how it came to be, uh, and then how to start um, by, uh, using some really simple tools to begin shifting that relationship into a more healthy and nurturing relationship. Awesome. Awesome. Phone number. So 
Our phone number is 541-210-5687. If you want to get on our blog, look us up at www.siskiyouviolmedicine.com. I uh, appreciate you guys for joining us, and that's going to wrap it up for tonight's first Wednesday Night Live. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Yay.